Today we're going to talk about watercolor paper. In fact, we're going to talk about Arsh watercolor paper, a watercolor paper that's been around for over 500 years. Our company started in 1492. So as we look at this plain sheet of paper, which we all face, it's basically like facing the blank canvas, but now we're facing blank paper. What results can we get from this? Why do artists choose this? Well, let me tell you why. One is that we have a long history and of consistency. A consistency that is so strong that many fine artists throughout history have used this paper. Arche watercolor paper is made in Arche, France. We basically make this paper from cotton. Cotton, this is a cotton linter, the kind of linter we would use. It's really not the cotton ball, we don't use that part. What we use is actually the fibers that are from around the seed. They would normally be thrown away. When you see, uh, and by the way, this comes from the state of Tennessee. Some of the best cotton comes from here in the United States. We compact this together. It then is shipped to France, and then it is thrown into our mill, and we make our sheet of paper. One of the things that uh, why we use cotton is because it is naturally acid-free. It has very low amount of lignin. Uh, which would cause the paper to deteriorate. Plus, it has various um, fiber lengths, which gives us a lot of strength. Also, one of the things that we pride ourselves in is that we use no optical brighteners for our papers. If we are going to make, these are natural white. If we want to make a bright white paper, which we do, we just add a white pigment, which is light fast, so that it's not going to change. It's also not going to attract any acids and therefore the paper will stay acid free as long as it is kept out of an acid environment. Once the paper sheet is formed on our cylinder mold machine, we then run it through a process called texturing. We have three basic textures that we apply to the wet pulp to form the paper. One is a rough, cold press, and hot press. Just from looking at the paper, you could see a little bit of the texture, but by applying color, we can we can actually see the texture uh, in action. When I rub the brush across there, we're going to get this, this skipping motion. And of course, that is the rough paper. You're going to notice that the blue on here is very bright. On cold press, which we, and by the way, this texture is applied, we use a cloth which we call a felt. And it runs through several rollers. We have cold press which is basically a cold press roller with a felt on. You'll notice that this doesn't have as much texture as the rough paper. And then we have our third selection, which is our hot press paper. And this, we use no felt at all. Instead, we heat the rollers uh, with steam to basically iron the cotton. It's just like ironing a shirt to give us this very, very smooth surface. This is excellent for doing detail work, actually used for pen and ink, for a variety of different artistic techniques. Another characteristic of paper is its weight. One of the things about the weight of paper is the thickness. This is 140 pound paper. We also make this in a 90 pound. We also make it in a 300 pound and even as heavy as 400 pound. Uh, but don't let that weight uh, frighten you. Basically, they take 500 sheets of 22 by 30, weigh it, and that's how we get the weight. But always remember, the thicker the paper, the higher the number. So 300 pound is going to be thicker than 140 pound, and these are thicker than 90 pound. The relevance of these is that the heavier the paper, the more water we can apply to, to it. So when we're doing a wet and wet technique, as in here, or even applying acrylic to paper, we can saturate this paper, it will not buckle. Another thing about the paper, and one of the unique things with Arsh, is the amount of sizing that has been put in. This is something that was developed over the years in making the paper. How do you know how much paper, how much sizing is in the paper? When we make the paper, we add this gelatin sizing. We call that internal sizing. Once the texture is put in, we then run it through another bath of what we call external sizing. So another coating is put on top. But how does one test for sizing? Sizing, we do a, a wash, dry brush stroke, which is a typical watercolor technique. We then 
take a clean brush with water, brush it over that area, take a dry paper towel, preferably clean, dab it, and take the pigment off of the uh, paper. Depending on the paper, you'll find that some of the color will still remain on there. We want some of that color because the sizing, what the sizing does is it allows the optimum amount of absorption. That's important to a watercolorist because when we brush the first coat down, it's not a problem. We don't want it to sink in or else it will dull the color. But it is for the second and third and four washes. So here we placed yellow across this blue. We got our green optical mixing, but around the edge we have no bleeding. When we have here two layers of color over the top, we don't have any mudding of the color because of the right amount of absorption. This was what makes this watercolor paper very popular because it is unique and it works for the artist. For more information on Arsh watercolor paper, please go to the Arsh page on the Dick Blick website. Thank you.